Howdy folks, and welcome to something slightly different. I'm having a go of Final Fantasy XIV. Yes, there will be comparisons to World of Warcraft in this video, because World of Warcraft is what I know, and it's also what I'm starting to get heartily sick of. Which is why I thought I'd give Final Fantasy XIV a shot. I've heard very good things about it, and it does seem to be the place where all of the World of Warcraft refugees are going, much to the consternation of the Final Fantasy regulars who are getting thoroughly sick and tired of all of the Warcraft wankers complaining that, oh, this isn't like World of Warcraft. Well, no, that's kind of the point, and if you don't like it, bugger off back to World of Warcraft. Nevertheless, there are valid comparisons to be made, and I'm going to be making them. I didn't have too many preconceptions when I fired up Final Fantasy XIV for the first time, aside from, well, you know, it is Final Fantasy and there's an awful lot of baggage associated with that. There's going to be a distinct art style, the characters are all going to look a certain way, and while I've never been a real fan of the JRPG genre in general, or the Final Fantasy games in particular, mostly because, well, two reasons. One, the characters all just look like such utter wankers. <laughs> Especially the male characters. With their fabulous hair and their petulant attitude to, well, everything. And I've kind of found that to be true in all Japanese games, particularly where the male characters are concerned, not just the JRPGs. I mean, Ace Combat 7, the male characters in that were utter douchebags as well, more concerned with their haircuts than they were with, you know, their actual jobs. And that was a major turn-off for me. Also, the female characters tend to be hypersexualized in a way that can be very, very uncomfortable, particularly since they also tend to look a lot younger than the characters are supposed to be. You all know what I'm talking about here. Nevertheless, millions of people play this, and they can't all be dirty, filthy weebs, so I thought I'd give it a fair crack of the whip. And we're going to start with character creation. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, The Mighty Jingles was originally my gnome warlock character in World of Warcraft. So I thought I'd have a stab at replicating him here in Final Fantasy XIV. So just by way of reference, I suppose I should first show you exactly what it is that we're aiming for. And this is the evil gnome overlord himself in all of his terrible glory. Behold his power and tremble, ye mortals. So how can we approximate this in Final Fantasy XIV? Well, the short answer is we can't, not really. But we're going to have a damn good try. So these are your basic human characters. I'm imagining that these are kind of elves or something. Honestly, I have no idea. Ah, here we go. The Lalafell. Alright, that'll be what we're looking for. We Oh my god, they have furries. I was afraid of this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, cat girls with pointy ears and furry tails and... Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh no, it's worse than I thought. You've got two different choices of furries. You can have lizard girls or cat girls. <laughs> and those last two races at the bottom of the list appear to be something that I don't have access to yet, so... I guess we're going to have to go with a Lalafell. And I can't believe I actually exist in a world where I can say that sentence. <laughs> and it makes sense. <laughs> All right. Lalafell it is. Male or female? Well, male, obviously. What's this? Unique pose. Oh yeah, it's the um, it's the cosplayer pose. What's this? Small clo- oh, I'm sorry I asked. Wait, does it have this option for all of the races? Yes, it does. Well, of course it does. I mean, why wouldn't it? Although, to be fair, you can do this in World of Warcraft as well. It's not like they're nude. Right, anyway, let's see if... I really need to stop messing around with these options. <laughs> Get on with it, Jingles. You haven't even created a character yet. All right, fine. Uh, there is a huge and 
baffling array of different options in character creation, most of which I don't actually understand and don't know if they actually affect the way the character is going to end up playing. I mean, aside from the basic, are you going to be a Plainsfolk or Dunesfolk Lelafell, and then all of the various different cosmetic options, which I have to admit were a little disappointing. I mean, there are plenty of cosmetic options, but they don't really change anything. No matter what you choose, how you try to tweak your hair colour, your face, your jaw, your eye shape, your iris size, your eye colour, your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth, your lip colour, and so on and so on and so on, what you end up with still basically looks like a disturbingly sexualized, big-headed four-year-old. And as for trying to create a character that looked like the Mighty Jingles himself, well, I can kind of approximate his hairstyle, I can definitely do his hair colour, I can give him a stash, but unfortunately, the Falafel do not get beards. The closest thing I could give him was this little sort of hipster goatee. Um, and that was it, I'm afraid. So with the Mighty Jingles approximated as best as I could in Final Fantasy XIV, it was time to pick my birthday. Does this matter? Don't know. You'd think if it did matter, they would have said so. But they don't, so fine, whatever. I'll pick whatever approximates the 10th of March, my actual birthday, and also the birthday of Chuck Norris and Osama Bin Laden. Now I have to pick the god that I worship. Does this matter? Don't know. <laughs> Once again, you'd think if it did matter, they would have told you. But, well, Final Fantasy XIV isn't exactly the first game that made you pick the god that you worship during the character creation process. Elder Scrolls Online, I'm looking at you here, even though you probably weren't the first either. So, I pick a god that I'm almost positive doesn't actually matter. When it comes to selecting character class, they don't have warlocks in Final Fantasy XIV, so I pick Arcanist. And then I try to get into a game. And it was here where I ran into my first problem. And honestly, it was kind of dumb. The game recommended that I start on the Moogle server. It's an EU server, it makes sense. So, okay, let's uh, just put my character name in. The Mighty. And, of course, Jingles, because obviously. And we'll confirm that. New characters can't be made on this world at this time. Then why did you recommend I create my new character on this world? Back to the server selection screen. Sprig and EU, and the one directly below it, have these gold stars next to them. This means that these servers are actually granting bonus experience to new characters. But it won't even let me select those servers. So, there are servers that have been specifically set up to welcome new characters that it won't allow you to even select as a server to play on, and it won't let you create new characters on the servers that it will select as the server that you want to play on. Really? I suspect that what we're actually seeing here is Final Fantasy XIV struggling to accommodate the influx of refugees from World of Warcraft over the last couple of months, something that they appear to be having problems dealing with. A guess that appeared to be borne out when I did eventually convince the game to give me a server to play on. Here we go. Begin a new game with this character. And we're in. Except we're not. <laughs> yeah, not a great start. Well, I'll cut a long story short. After sitting through an extremely lengthy pre-character creation intro sequence that didn't really explain anything, but did look very pretty, I got to create my character, and then I had to fiddle around a bit and be a bit patient when it came to actually getting a server to play on, at which point you were greeted with yet another extremely lengthy intro sequence that doesn't really explain much of anything, but is you know, very, very pretty. I'm beginning to detect a theme emerging here, and I probably shouldn't have been surprised because, well, it's a JRPG. This is what they're like. To be completely fair, you can press escape and skip all of these cutscenes. Which is just as well, because there are a lot of them. And this is something that really pissed me off in the latest World of Warcraft expansion, Shadowlands as well, because there is an awful lot 
of standing around listening to exposition in that, which you cannot skip, which was boring the very first time I played through it, but by the time I was on my seventh character, it was tedious beyond imagination. But you can skip it in Final Fantasy XIV, so that's a big thumbs up from me, at least as far as this sort of thing's concerned, because it is basically meaningless. So we are going to skip it, and we're going to get to the actual game, at last. Except, actually we're not. <laughs> no, there's more exposition that you have to sit through. There is a lot of this that you have to read through before it even gives you control of your character. I'm not going to make you sit through all of it. I did it so you don't have to. You're not missing anything by not seeing it. You don't need to see it. It doesn't really tell you anything. It's just there to waste your time before the game eventually agrees to let you start playing it. Some time later, I'm actually playing the game. Sort of. I'm still kind of in the tutorial. Which assumes that you have never played an MMORPG before. Which I suppose is entirely fair, but is kind of tedious when you have played a lot of MMORPGs. But, well, that's not real fault of the game. It has to... Anybody who may be playing it for the first time. The game doesn't know how much experience you have of playing MMORPGs, so everybody starts from a level playing field. This is fine. But it's here where I run into my second fairly major issue with Final Fantasy XIV. And if I'm being completely fair, it's also my final major issue with Final Fantasy XIV. And it's something that I probably should have seen coming, because all JRPGs are like this, and Final Fantasy XIV has shown many, many signs of being like this up to this point, and it's interaction with non-player characters. Quest givers in particular. My god, they like to talk. I mean, they really, really like to talk. I've been sent to this place to speak to this person. This is literally the first quest that I've been given in Final Fantasy XIV. Watch how this guy goes on and on and on and on and you get the idea so far i have absolutely no idea what it is that he actually wants me to do he hasn't gotten around to that yet now this is an extreme example because it is the very first quest that you're given so i suppose to a degree they are still trying to set the scene do a little bit of world building here introduce me to the area in which i am going to be questing but while this is an extreme example it's by no means unique. Every quest giver is like this. Every quest giver engages you in idle chit chat, moans and wails about the shitty hand that life has dealt them before they eventually get around to the point and tell you what it is that they want you to do. By way of contrast, let me just show you how the competition handles this. World of Warcraft, obviously. This is my Death Knight, and there's a quest NPC. So first I'm going to hand the quest in. There she is. Right click, complete quest, done. Oh, she's got a follow-up quest for me, okay. Well, fair enough. Right click, Find Foreman. Okay, it tells me exactly what it is that she wants me to do. All of the information is there in one pop-up. Done. Meanwhile, back in Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> I still don't know what this guy wants me to do, and he's been talking to me for two minutes. In most other MMOs at this point, with, with this much time invested into the game, even at this early stage, I would have been level 10 and completed the starter zone by now. In Final Fantasy XIV, I still haven't completed my first quest. I still haven't gotten to the stage where I can complete the quest and hand it in. And I still don't even really know what it is that I'm doing here. Oh, 
Well, that's JRPGs for you. Oh, hang on. Wait. Is it? Have I? Yes! Yes! I have completed my first quest in Final Fantasy XIV. That's it. I've completed the game. I can go home now. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Oh, to be completely fair to Final Fantasy XIV, not all of the quests are as bad as this. And when I say bad, I mean the fact that the quest givers just will not shut up. They're not as bad as this, but they are still pretty bad. However, and I have to admit, this is a fairly major plus point in Final Fantasy XIV's favour. Aside from that, I haven't really found anything else to complain about. However, one thing is clear. If I am going to be making any further progress through the game, I am not going to be staring at the arse of an overtly sexualized, big-headed four-year-old. I figure if you can't beat them, you may as well join them. And since I point-blank refuse to roll one of the more human-looking male characters because they all look and sound like pretentious wankers, well, that can only mean one thing. Look, don't judge me, alright? If I'm going to be staring at an arse for the next 60 hours of gameplay, I want it to be an arse that I don't actually mind staring at. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, allow me to introduce Alluriel Shadow Song. Slayer of Marmots. Alluriel is a guardian, which is one of the tank classes in Final Fantasy XIV. Although, this is something I do like about Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, because in World of Warcraft, I kind of get bored playing one character all the time. So I have a whole bunch of what are known as alts, alternate characters. A lot of them are maximum level 2, um, and as you can imagine, with all of the different character classes in World of Warcraft, getting all of those different characters up to maximum level so you can experience end game gameplay with a maximum level character of each class takes a hell of a lot of time. You don't have to do that in Final Fantasy XIV. You only need one character. I mean, Alluriel here is a guardian. Guardian? No, sorry, a gladiator. Holy shit, Jingles, get it right. Um, which is a tank class. But at any time, she can start learning another class. And she doesn't lose the progress that she's made as a gladiator. It's not out of the question that I could eventually have one character who's maximum level in every available class in the game. So that's good. The combat system is... and I acknowledge that I'm probably not really in a fantastic position to judge because I haven't even made it to level 10 yet. But in my experience thus far, it's fairly simple, it's straightforward, it's what you'd expect of an MMORPG. If you've never played Final Fantasy XIV before, but you have played other games like Guild Wars 2, like World of Warcraft, you'll be right at home. If you've never played an MMORPG before, then it's not difficult to learn. It drip feeds your new abilities at a slow but steady rate and shows that you know what you're doing with one ability before it hands you another ability. The combat animations are a bit flashier than what I'm used to, but they're what you'd expect of a JRPG, and they certainly aren't overdone. I've played other games where the combat animations and spell effects are just so ridiculously over the top that you you can't even see what you're doing or who you're fighting, uh, which can be a problem if you're fighting multiple opponents and one of them needs to be focused down, but you don't really get that. In Final Fantasy XIV, the combat is good. It's not too hard. It's not too easy. It seems to be pitched at exactly the right level. You've got these things, they call them FATES. It stands for Full Active Time Event, which is completely meaningless and basically is just a bunch of words that they strung together so that they could call it FATE. And it's as good a name as any, I suppose. What these are are basically world events. Public quests, as they were known when they first appeared in the MMORPG scene in Warhammer Online many, many, many years ago. It's an active quest going on in an area and anybody can turn up, take part and contribute towards completion of the quest. It was a great idea in Warhammer Online. And so, of course, it was shamelessly ripped off in all kinds of games uh, including, but not limited to, Guild Wars 2, World of Warcraft, and of course, Final Fantasy XIV. And hey, why not? It's a good idea, it works, why not use it? 
One other minor quibble that I would have with Final Fantasy XIV, and I, you know, I realise that I am really looking for problems here, uh, and it is a fairly minor problem, but it's to do with the atmosphere. The world itself is... And I, again, I realise I haven't seen much of it yet. I'm not even level 10. It seems to be competently designed. I mean, it looks realistic. It certainly hasn't gone for the cartoony look that World of Warcraft has. And it hasn't gone for the overtly stylized look that Guild Wars 2 has, but seems to have settled for somewhere yeah, halfway between the two. And that's fine. But the music, I don't know if you've noticed, it's awfully generic. And it rarely seems to fit what's actually happening at the time. I mean, the music's not bad. I mean, it's certainly better than competent, but it's definitely not great. I've heard far, far worse. I've played games where the only music seemed to be the same 20 second clip on a continuous loop. And after an hour of that, taking a cheese grater to your nipples starts to sound like a worthy distraction. The music in Final Fantasy XIV is far better than that, but it's all just kind of generic and samey, regardless of where you are or what you're doing. Which is a shame, because, well, just listen to what it's going up against. And I do hate to keep bringing up World of Warcraft every couple of minutes, but World of Warcraft sound, and in particular music design, has always been absolutely outstanding. And this is who Final Fantasy XIV is competing with. Check out the background music in Dalaran, the floating city of mages in Northrend. Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy XIV... You see what I mean? It's not bad. It's a perfectly well-written piece of music. It's just not really appropriate to what's happening at the time, and it's not particularly memorable either. It's just a little bit generic. It's just a little bit jrpg -y. You know what I mean? And I'm not just cherry-picking particularly impressive music from World of Warcraft, either. World of Warcraft is like this everywhere. Right now, I'm flying through the Storm Peaks, down the Valley of Winters. I'm approaching Dun Mifflin. The music will change. And it's appropriate. As we fly through Dun Mifflin, we're going to emerge on the other side in an area that's known as Thunderfall. It's the site of an ancient battle between the Frost Giants and the Frost Dwarves that didn't end well for either side. They're all frozen in place and have been like that for centuries. And listen to how the music changes. And the area is still haunted by the ghosts of the dead Frost Giants. I mean, this is a particularly hard act to follow. And Final Fantasy XIV doesn't do a bad job, but it's not even in the same league as this, as far as the music's concerned. And yet, at the same time, these are kind of minor complaints. I mean, they're not minor complaints if you work in the field of game music. <laughs> Wait, for a second there you were thinking, finally, the recognition we deserve. You, what do you mean, minor complaints? Um, yeah, I know. But in the grand scheme of things, People only really notice the music in games if they're particularly bad or particularly good. And you're just not going to really notice the music in Final Fantasy XIV because it's neither. It just... Well, it's not particularly good, but it's definitely not particularly bad. It, it's, it's competent. It gets the job done. But here's the thing. After a good couple of hours in Final Fantasy XIV, which, again, I acknowledge is just scratching the surface, but I'm nearly level 10. And the only things I've found to complain about 
are the dodgy server selection process, the overly chatty non-player characters, and the music that isn't fantastic. And that's it. Everything else is pretty damn impressive. Except for, you know, my current performance where I utterly failed in tanking this uh, public event boss. And I'm lying in a snotty heap on the floor, waiting for one of the victorious players to come over and pick me up. Which I'm sure will be happening any time now. They just need to finish off the boss. Okay, maybe not any time now. Um, he still has an awful lot of health. But we'll come back in a few minutes when they've killed him. Come on, fellas. You can do it. Hey, there it is. Fate complete. And even though I'm dead, I still get the rewards, so that's nice. You know, if you can just uh, finish off the ads and then res me, that'd be fantastic. Guys? Guys? Anyone? It was those comments I made about the furries, wasn't it? Man, these weebs really hold grudges, don't they? Get damn weebs. I will remember this and mock you mercilessly on YouTube. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to res at the nearest city. Okay, that's fine. That's no problem. I'll remember this. So, yeah, Final Fantasy XIV. It's pretty good. It's a very, very pleasant change from World of Warcraft. And if you are a Final Fantasy XIV veteran, please accept my most sincere apologies for all the World of Warcraft refugees currently infesting your servers, polluting chat with complaints that, oh, World of Warcraft doesn't do it like this. Yes, we know. That's kind of the point, really, isn't it? Just shut up and enjoy the game. As for myself, I'm going to pick this moment to just shut up because I've been talking about Final Fantasy XIV for far too long already and doubtless you have other World of Warships or World of Tanks videos on YouTube that you would much rather be watching. But if you have stuck with this video this far, then thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.